Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint a crashing wave on the beach. Something I've been meaning to do for quite a while, but I finally got my head around it and decided it would be a really interesting tutorial to do. So if you want to follow along exactly as I'm showing you, then I'm using the app Procreate on an iPad. I've opened an A4 default canvas size. The brushes I'm going to be using are within, first of all, airbrushing, and the soft brush, which is at the top of the list, not the soft airbrush, but soft brush within airbrushing, the medium brush within airbrushing, and then within the spray paints, I'm gonna be using the Flix brush. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected some colors here. There are codes associated with each of the colors, which if you go to the value section within the color area, you can type each of the codes that I've put in the video description here one at a time, press enter, the color will appear up here, and you can tap it together for yourself or also in the video description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the colors there for free in a file. As well as that in the description, you'll also find a link for my Facebook group, which has over 30,000 members that share their work and give feedback to each other. And of course myself, and also my Instagram page, where if you tag me, then I'll get to see it and I always give a response. With all that said and out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do on my first layer, go to my Colors, ignore those. These first colors, I'm gonna to go to my first color on the top row, drag it from the little circle into the canvas area and it will flood fill that entire area. I'm going to create another layer, go back to my colors and I'm going to skip a few colors. I will use them, I'll come back to them in just a moment, but I'm gonna to go to the fifth color along now. So it's the middle color of the colors on the top row. So it's five along from the left and also the right. I'm also gonna to go to the selection tool onto the rectangle option. And I'm just going to drag a rectangle here, select a really big section of it like this. And then I'm just going to drag that color into that available section. I'm going to tap back out of it. And this second color is on a new layer. So I can adjust it, just that one color in isolation. So I'm gonna select the transform tool and on the freeform option, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger have it occupy a little bit more of the canvas and leave a narrower band at the top. It does have an incredibly straight line, too crisp really for a painterly look. So I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, and just blur it in to about a 3%. I'm gonna go back to layer one, go back to my brushes, I'm gonna use the soft brush, back to my colors. I'm going to use the second color on the top row. I'm gonna put the brush size at about 10% and I'll put it 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna introduce it at the edges over here and a little bit over here. So just like the top corners really. Then I'm gonna go back to my color. We'll stay on the same layer for this. I'm gonna to go to my third color in. I'm just going to stay on the 10% and just have it really in the middle, just skimming along the bottom like that. Maybe a little bit higher. Then I'm gonna to go to my fourth color in, reduce it down now to about 6% and just aim that nice warm color at the very bottom there. Then with that everything on that entire layer, so layer one, I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur and blur it in to about 40%. So we've got a subtle transition now of colors, a little bit darker at the edges and just a hint of a warmth on that horizon line. We can always go back into it later and just further magnify that sense of warmth. But for now, it's a good start. We're gonna to go to our top layer and create a new layer on top of that. So we're on the third layer now. We're gonna stay on the soft brush, but we're gonna move off the first four colors. We've already used the fifth color for the ocean general background color. So we're gonna to go to the one beyond that, which is the sixth color along, and it's a slightly lighter color. I'm gonna reduce the brush down to 3% size and 20% opacity. And just a little bit below that point, I'm gonna start introducing this slightly lighter color as a band that cuts across. It doesn't need any real definition at this point. It's just the placement. And then another gap, a little bit below that, and we're going to do another one like this. I'm then gonna reduce the size of the brush to the lower end of 2%. So just as it crosses over from 1%, up to 2%, that's about the correct point. We're gonna keep it at the 20% opacity. And I'm just going to now lightly start to bring in some stretched out lines, some dashes above 
the shape that we've already created. Now we may go back in here and use even more texture later on, but I think just to take off some of the flatness, and you can zoom in a little bit if you want to see a bit more detail, but you don't need to be too concerned about this. Just try and keep it in roughly a straight line as you're cutting across. We're just starting to build in some of those textures, but we're definitely going to go over it with dark colors, different colors and lighter colors to bring out these textures more. But you might just get some lines there in the distance that are almost standing out as much as the two that we've just created. It does change dramatically in this thick first band. And then in between those two thicker bands, we can perhaps create some more obvious bands of this lighter color as well, just to sort of split them up, have some more breaks and divisions. So a bit more fragmented. They don't necessarily join up. If you feel like you've made them join up too much, you can go to your eraser. Now I've got my eraser set on a hard brush, so I'll soften that to a soft brush. Put it at something like a similar size, so around the 2%, maybe not 100% opacity, it's a bit severe. So 60% will do. And if I just wanted to remove some of these, if I felt like it's just creating one line, I don't want it to be one line, then I can get rid of some of it. Back to my brush tool, turn the size of the brush up to the top end of 2%, and just leave a gap between that thicker band and just start intro introducing some suggestions of texture, broken dashes. Don't be too precise about this. It doesn't really matter. You're keeping it gestural. Try and keep them in straight lines as much as possible. They can have a slight curve to them, but that was too much. Okay, so we've started to create some sense of texture there. So I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to move from that color, which was the sixth along, and now I'm going to go to the seventh color along, or third in from the right. I'm going to continue to use the soft brush. I'm going to have it at the top end of 2%, keep it at 20% opacity, and we still have a big gap here. So we had the bottom band before we start adding some of these texture, and we'd left a gap. So I'm going to start filling in some of that gap with this darker texture. I'm doing it incrementally, so I don't want to do it as a flat texture, which is why it's only at the 20%. Uh, but we can take it all the way along. And in fact, I'm going to have it thinning here and then ramping up and getting wider. But I'm going to have to represent some kind of almost folding over around this point. So I'm going to have a section here where it splinters off, forms into a little roll of water around this point, forming a wave. And then I'm going to do another one on this side as well. But I'm just getting a general sense for the, the placement and the light and dark just initially. I'll probably darken it up with a different color. We can have one or two thicker bands of dark color just creeping in here. Maybe I'll reduce the size of the brush to the lower end of 2%, be a bit more precise. I'm doing this quite lightly still. I'm just adding some definition, some extra dark stripes and dashes coming in here like that. Now it's still visible. I had a top band here, which is a thicker, softer band before we added texture above that. And just at the bottom part of that thicker band, I'm just going to introduce some of this dark or darker blue in there as well. There's another stripe going across. Again, still on the lower end of 2% and 20% opacity. And I'm just going to have this disappearing as it comes towards the center of our canvas here. In fact, I've done too much. Let's dial it back. That's better. And maybe just in the middle of this section, I'll bring in another dark band. I mean, if your bands don't end up exactly the same placement as mine, it doesn't really matter. Just getting used to the general sense. And obviously ripples in water are going to vary considerably. And if I did this again, I'd put them in a different position. So it doesn't really matter if yours vary, deviate a little bit. And I'm going to darken it up over this side too. So I'm keeping it as separate bands, quite a few different stripes cutting into each other. So we're losing the, the sense of where those original bands were, and that's fine, that's okay. I'm going to create another layer, go back to my colors, and I'm going to use the eighth color along, or the second in from the right, and this is considerably darker. I'm still at the lower end of 2% and 20% opacity, and I'm going to start darkening up this quite a bit more. I'm going to have it folding over here as a wave. We're going to set this dark tone to begin with. But I'm taking this now and creating a little bit more of a defined top edge. And then it's a little bit darker near the bottom as well. I'll darken up it, the section over here. I mean, all of this is stuff that you'll probably fine tune as you go along. 
I may come back a little later in the actual tutorial and just go and fine tune some of these details, but I'll just get you the foundations in place first and then we can go back and refine. So I've just created a little bit more of a, almost a wave there. Don't overdo it though, it can look too much very easily. And then I'm just gonna sharpen this up a little bit, make it a little bit more obviously, kind of part of this wave, but it splits and rolls. And then I'm going to reduce the size of the brush really to the lower end of 2% and just use this dark color just to add a bit more definition to some of these lines in the background. Maybe just separate it up so we've got a dark streak there, a little bit of a gap perhaps, and then we can introduce another darker shade and then, you know, maybe even thinner so into the 1% and then just lightly introduce some of those dark colors in here as well. And then we can add it bit more dark shades of this area too. Bring it across with this 1% size brush. Just creating more and more texture and lines, which is really helping the effect. And then we've got the top section. I'm going to reduce the opacity to only 10%. And just like we did with a light color, in fact, that's even too strong. So we need to have it significantly lower. 3% opacity, keep it at 1% size. And I'm just going to start introducing more and more lines across, adding more texture to that background. You can do it in maybe shorter dashes, keep overlapping them, building them up. It's going to increase the sense that this ripple's going further and further into that background. We can always zoom in a little bit later and just start to define it a little bit more if we feel it needs it, but just initially just keep it quite loose, quite impressionistic. So I'm going to create another layer. It's very layer heavy, this piece. We'll use that darkest color, but not just yet. We will come back to it. But I'm gonna to skip to the second layer of colors. We're gonna use these colors now to add some of the, the green shining through to suggest we've got light and translucency in those waves. So the first color, you can see where it is on the color disc. It's a much more turquoise blue-green color. Go to our brushes, use the soft brush, put it at the lower end of 2%, higher up on the opacity again to about 20%, and I'm just gonna start introducing this color on top here. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Now I'm going almost between two darker bands here. So we've got a whole darker band section, but I'm gonna allow the top of it to remain a little bit darker and the bottom of it to remain a little bit darker as well. So I'm kind of heading towards that middle section and I'm bringing out some of that green. back to our colors and we have a slightly more bluey version of that color and I'm just going to use it perhaps over to this side and maybe just mix it up so we have variation of tone and color as well just a little bit we don't need to really spend too long on that I'm going to go back to my layers create another layer and back to my colors and I have this gray color now which I'm going to use to start to suggest parts of the wave are starting to fold over starting to get some turbulence in the water and we've got that white foam and froth. So I'm going to reduce the size of the brush to the lower end of 2% and keep it at 20% opacity. We're doing it really low opacity for a good chunk of this just to build it up more gradually. We can zoom in a little bit and just in this section I'm going to introduce just little points of white. Well it's not white but it's you know it's a paler colour. It's heading towards white and just little notes of it here. So you're just getting a suggestion now between that dark blue and the green, you're getting little breaks, little broken things in that water. And then as it comes along here, you're gonna get it along the very top just a little bit before it descends as a folding shape downwards over here. And you can have a little bit of that at the top as well. Maybe just a couple of lines to encourage the sense that it's heading that direction. Maybe just create a few irregular bumps here at the top and then a little bit more disruption there at the bottom. Maybe there's a bit too much there. I'll just take some of that back. In fact, almost done too much of it. So that will do for that particular detail. I'm gonna move it along to this area, zoom in a little bit again. We're gonna start as it comes down into this area, not on the very top, but I'm just gonna start bringing in a little bit down from the top of that curve. I may sharpen that up in a moment as well, but just a little bit underneath that. Bring almost like a lacy trim where it's just starting to fold over in areas. Zoom in again. Again, it's really soft focus this. I'm using the soft brush for a reason. 
In fact, we'll turn it down a little bit for this sharper detail. So we'll put it in just into the 1%. It's not much different, but just a little bit. And we'll have it folding down now. There's more of a discernible, recognizable wave crashing over. But there's a point here and there's like a lip at the top as well, where you've got a disruption in the water and just bubbles along the very top there too. Create a little bit more irregularity in this area. And then just a, a couple of faint points as we go further along there. A couple of faint points as we go along here as well. And then I'm going to just jump to a pure white that is over at this end and I'm going to use it very sparingly. I'm not going to change the settings. So it's 1% size, 20% opacity. And just in and amongst that now, in fact, I'm going to reduce it even more down into the lower end of 1%. And within that, I can just create some variation of that white. So it's just picking up the light a little bit more in some areas rather than others. But even that I feel like is, is pretty strong. So I'm going to press more lightly than that. I want it to be a subtle detail. And then again, a little bit more over here as well. And that's the general suggestion of it. But let's go back to our colors, back to that green color. And with that 1% size and the 20% opacity now, I'm just gonna introduce underneath that white folding bit, a bit more of that green, bring it out a bit more prominently. Now we've got an area where we can see where the fold is and what's underneath that now. We can add a bit more of the green there, bring it across. And we definitely should have a bit more of that vibrant green underneath the wave there too. I think a good way of bringing out some of the clarity of that is to go back to that dark color I said I was going to use, go back into it and just use it with a low opacity. I would suggest somewhere around the 10%, 1% size, and just maybe make it a little bit clearer along that top edge. Not too much though, just a bit more clarity. A bit more darkness over in this area maybe. And I think I'm gonna darken some of this up as well, just to really almost make more of a feature of the luminous quality of the green. So I'm going to turn it up to 2% size, still at 10% opacity. But I think I just want to make a bit more of the dark just to really exaggerate the light. So often in a piece of work, it's about those contrasts. Things that make contrasts are really the, the interesting bits in a, in a piece. So look for areas to, to show those dramatic differences and contrast like this. Now I'm just going to turn the brush size up to 3% and turn the opacity down to 5%. I'm just going to start generally shutting down some of the, the light area here. I want to make it generally a little bit darker on the left and the right and underneath. And then I reduce it back down again to the 2% and I'm just going to further darken up this wave here. In fact, I'm going to turn it up now. I want it to be a bit more dramatic. So back up to the 20% in this area now. I really want to bring out the darkness in parts of this wave, parts of the bit above it. It shouldn't go too far back because the darker tones will get softer in the distance, so you don't want to push that too much. But yeah, press lightly, we can really start to darken up some of this area too. And we can always go back in and bring out some of the light colors too. In fact, we definitely will be doing that. I'm going to reduce that down to the 2% size a little bit further and then bring some of this dark tone in places more along here. Make a bit more out of some of these more background dashes and wave features. Seems a bit flat in this area, so I'm just going to go over it, add a light sense that there's more going on there, perhaps. Back to my colors. I've got this light blue color, which is actually the color of the background color on the sky. So I'm going to use that on the same layer, turn it down to the lower end of 2%, put it at about 10% opacity. And I'm just going to build perhaps a lighter area here. You get all sorts of shifts of tone in the ocean and the sea, and you don't always know exactly what that is. It can just be things under the water. It could be the, the waves and the disruption movement. We're adding a bit more of that light color up here just to further change and vary it up a little bit. And I'm thinking perhaps along this top edge, bring in just a bit more of that light color along the top there too. Again, a bit more about those contrasts, isn't it? So we've got lots of those dark stripes. So we're adding a few more of the light stripes in there to really contrast with them. Something like this. 
create another layer, back to our colors. So we'll go for this lighter color here. So it's the fourth color along on the middle row. And we'll stay on this soft brush, put it at the top end of 2%, and we'll put it about 30% opacity. And just where our textures start to disappear, we're going to start bringing in a rippled wave that perhaps rises up and crashes over and then dips and undulates and then rises again, dips, something like this. Then we can just go in there and just start to bring out more and more of this colour. We'll increase the size of the brush in fact, let's go for it, put it more like the 5%, ramp it up. We're on a separate layer so if we want to sharpen the edge with an eraser we can do that. And we'll bring that down to somewhere about the halfway point of what we've got left. Okay, back to our colours. We'll stay on the same layer to this darker, greenier colour. And we'll bring this in more gradually. So we'll put it down to about 15% opacity and 4% size on the brush. And we're just going to start around that lower point of that green colour, we're going to have some bands where we're bringing in this dark tone. We're bringing it up to about here, but we're going to leave this top section quite vibrant, quite green. We can all shut it down a little bit later if we need to in areas, but initially we're going to leave it quite light at the top. So you can do circular motions or stripes all the way across, whatever suits you. It's going to have loads of texture over the top of this, so don't worry too much. And then with this third turquoise colour, green-blue colour, we're going to stick around the 15% opacity and 4% size and just start to bring some of this even darker blue colour down in the bottom section. I'm going to create another layer on top, so we're on layer 9, go back to our colours. I'm going to go to this brighter version of those colours and with a bit more precision, so I'm going to reduce it down to the 2% size, somewhere in the middle, 15% opacity again. I'm going to choose a point here where I'm going to have it as a crashing wave and then another folding wave over here as well. So I'm just going to go over this whole section with this lighter colour and I'm building it up gradually so we don't want it to be too severe. I'm just going over this section where it folds over. And then another one here too, into this section, and we can just roughly fill that in with this lighter colour. I'm going over it quite a lot, as you can see, but I'd rather build it up more gradually than put the opacity too strong and just have it look too flat. This way you tend to see the brush marks a little bit less and it looks just a little bit better. I'm going to reduce the size of that brush to 2%, lower at that end, and just create some lines now infrequently, but just some gestures to represent almost the movement of that wave and the, the direction of the water. Now I don't want it everywhere, so I'm just tidying up partially that top edge too in places, but I'm also using it to suggest that the direction of the water as it folds over. And we'll do the same over here too. Just the beginning textures, there's going to be loads more, but it just gets you part way to conceptualizing the, the direction of the water anyway. Okay, so we're going to create another layer. So we're going to move from that color to the next color. It's a slightly subdued, more towards the whites, but more subdued. We used it a little bit up there as well, but we're going to continue in that vein. 2% size on the soft brush, and we'll move it up a little bit to 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start bringing in now some things at the top edge of that wave. So we can do it on the very edge here, going off the edge of the canvas, bring in some little breaks in that water, some turbulence, but only when it gets over to this section does it start to be more dramatic perhaps. And then on the very edge, like the frill of the wave, we're going to get lots more of that foamy white colour. And we'll just set it over the side as well, so it's just going to Again, just nibble on the very edge, the top line there, keep it broken and irregular. And then as it comes over here, we can have it in bigger gestures and round shapes generally. We can have some blobs that stick up here and there. And then we can have some more shapes in amongst here as well. 
So I'm doing lots of round gestures for this, it really will help. And then we'll go on to this part and we'll again, we'll just create this sense of throth and pressing lightly. We're still only on 20% opacity, but a combination of pressing lightly as well as setting the opacity low really helps. So we're just creating an irregular texture in this area, getting a sense of where that churning of water is going to be. I'm going to use a combination of colors. So I've got this blue color that I'm going to use to represent some of the shaded areas where it's just folding over and not catching the light quite as much but I'm going to move some grey into there as well. But I'll start with the blue and I'll just bring it into the lower section. Again, it's still on those that low opacity of 20%, so we're just building it in subtly, but it, presence will still be felt. It gives it a little bit more volume, more sense of actual shape. And then we can go back and we'll move along to this brighter colour now. And this is the point where we're going to start really build, building in some of the real white touches to that churning water and building up the contrast we were talking about earlier. And we need to just try and bring out as much as we can of this kind of texture. So we're going to sharpen up a little bit at the lower end of 2%, just a bit more precision, especially along that edge and the top part of the churning water. So just like it has volume, the underneath is going to not get as much light, but the top part of it is going to be more of a texture that's catching the light. So a bit like a cloud shape, it's picking up the light on the top edge. Maybe the separations even within, just like we've got layers of waves, got layers of churn too. But generally speaking, we're going to have more of that white along that top part here rather than underneath. And then we can pick out some more little sh textures and bits in and amongst here. We did start to use some of those lines to suggest the direction, but we can have some anomalies in there too. Texture is key for this. And again, we haven't used the pure white yet. Even the white we're using is a warm white compared to the white at the very end. So I'm building up in lots of dots and dashes and, and slight round shapes. It's just something you're gonna have to build up slowly, so take the time. And then lower down into the shadow area, we can continue to add some of that white as well. Then we can go back in with that purest white. And like I was saying, just at the very top, we can bring out just an extra element of super brightness at the very top there. And I'll move along to this side now, do a little bit more. Now I am using the purest white now, and it's quite useful just to pick out again at that top edge. Perhaps going to leave a little bit more of this part more in shadow than the bottom section of there. Perhaps it's just getting more crashing here and you do get more of the white, at the, the white at the bottom part of that, but a little bit less on this one, perhaps. Okay, we're going to create another layer. Back to this lighter green colour. And we're going to put it on the airbrush. Soft brush still, 2% size and 10% opacity and I'm going to start building in some shapes in here that start to suggest that we've almost got like a webbing of a paler colour introduced in this section. So again it's going to be used to further describe the, the shape or the direction of the water curving up into this kind of a circular almost shape. Now it's going to be made up of streaks and webbing of this lighter colour where it's going to collect and join together in certain areas but then it's going to have gaps too. So I'll just start to build up a little bit of it. You can start to get a sense. I'm 
you start to notice the importance of some of these gaps. So once you start to get a suggestion of some of these gaps, you can then just go in and just further define it, make them more apparent than they were, make more of a feature of them. And we're going to alternate between that color and this blue color up here, which is fourth in from the right. So I'm just going to use that then to soften it in when it comes a little bit higher up. It's going to merge from that lighter color into that blue. And then when you see it in darker areas, you'll notice the blue a little bit more. But this lighter green color is obviously for lower sections. So we're going to use a combination of the two overlapping each other. So neither one of the colors is quite going to work because we have variation. Back to the pale green color and we can bring out some of these details again and it's going to be stretching up into this top section. But as we get that light green at the top anyway, it's going to be disappearing into that. I'll zoom in a little bit and bring us further down into this section. Again, it's like a webbing with lots of gaps. And then as we come down into this section, it's going to start flattening out again. So we're going to have the same effect of almost like a webbing. It's not like a spider's web. It's not, it doesn't form an orderly pattern. It is unfortunately one of those kinds of textures where you're just going to have to trial and error it a little bit, see what works. And as long as you get the colors right, then you're halfway there, but it is going to take time just to experiment with these textures. But we've got that general sense of the lines creeping up here, but as they come down into this section, they're going to be flattening out. Now, if you end up, as I'm going to just demonstrate here, getting too much of this color all flattening out, and you're filled in an area which you're not quite happy with, well, you can just go back in with the eraser. Now, I happen to be on the soft brush again, 2% size and 60% opacity, but I can just go in and I can put in some of these gaps in, just like we've got gaps up here. I can put them in with the eraser too. Back to my brushes though, and I'm just going to continue in this section. So I'm going to subtly introduce some of these colors and textures underneath the folding wave. Now, another thing that we can do once we've added some of these textures is start to go back and add in some of that darker green into this section. One way we can do that is we can go back to the layer where that green is originally from. Just move it over here and we can go back to our darker green, which was here and with our soft brush, maybe a little bit bigger. So we'll put it about the 4% size, put it about the 20% opacity, and we can lightly just start introducing more of this dark tone. And because it's behind this new texture that we're adding, it's really going to sell it effectively and bring out that texture, which is gonna work fantastically for us. And then it really starts to pull out the effect. In fact, let's continue to add a little bit more of that dark before we go back in with the texture. It always helps to add the dark tones to something that is actually more concrete and you're looking at something, you know where to add it then, where it will suit it best. Softly bring that in a bit more and also then it's going to contrast more nicely with the, the brighter colour on top and the bright colour showing through as well. Back to our top layer, we need to add more of this texture. So we're gonna go back to that light green color again, stay on the soft brush, but we do need to reduce it back down to the 2% size. And I'm gonna put it at 15% opacity and just start to bring more of this in again. So make sure it's lower end of 2% in fact. So you're trying to keep them in a slightly random formation so they don't really form a pattern. The only pattern is that you will get threads that connect one shape to another and it'll sort of like stretch across and go in the general direction that you imagine the wave will go. And then you're gonna get splits, you're gonna get gaps, and then you're just really looking to build that kind of webbing. Now, in addition to that, I will create another layer because it just occurred to me on the other side, you're going to get more of that 
type of formation, but it will almost create like a silhouette, like a shadow version of it on the other, other side, on the underside. So I'm going to go to this slightly darker colour. I'm going to keep it at the 2% size and the 15% opacity. And I'm just going to, in addition, start to build in some similar shapes, some just pieces. Not too much of this, just a few suggestions of things that are perhaps on the, the other side of the water or in the middle there, that's achieving something very similar to what we've done on this side, but it's on the other part of it behind. Perhaps we'll even move that a layer behind so that it doesn't overlap the lighter colors. That way we're just a bit freer to continue adding it without worrying about it overlapping. And you can alternate between these different colors. So we've got an even darker one there. Perhaps I'm just going to ramp up some of the darker color in this area. It's still only at 15%, so I'm going to have to do it or keep going over it in order to build it up. But I'm going to build it over into this section too. Perhaps we'll turn this brush size up to 3%. Build some more of this dark tone in. And you can see the more I add here, the more it really exaggerates the light, which is great. Back down again, 2%, just create some slightly more feathered in texture. Not too much of it though. And if you feel like you've gone too far in any places and that, just fine, just with an eraser, however you want to set it best, just maybe just knock it back a little bit from the top edge. We don't want too much of it, not everywhere anyway. You can just be selective. So maybe just in make one feature there to stand out more than others, but not don't have it everywhere, however you think will work best for you. I'm going to go back again to the top layer, back to my lighter colour and continue to bring some of that webbing over the top. 2% size and 15% opacity, but I'm just going to build up the brightness in some of those areas. Perhaps I'll just reduce it down to the lower end of 2% again. Intensify some of these colours, especially when they come out of the, the shadow of the wave and they come into this section, they're going to go a little bit brighter. So I'll start to add more of the impact in this section. And then maybe we'll just have over this side, very subtle amount of it. Maybe we're just gonna have the shadow obscuring it. It's not catching the light quite as much. So you're going to get hints of it. Perhaps we don't really see it until it gets more in this region. So maybe less of it underneath here. Still some. Again, we can go to the layer behind, use the dark colors just to build in some extra things there too. I think I want to create another layer on top. Go back to my colors. Now I've just been using this gray. I'm gonna go for this even lighter color now, which you can see on here. It's not quite a full white, but it's a warm white, but it is also brighter. So on this layer, I'm gonna start building on some in some really bright tones. So I'm gonna put it up to the top end of 2% and just start bringing in some more of this lighter color over in this section. It's gonna be more of the white churn. So we're gonna see more of that white color but also it's slightly less in the shadow, so it's gonna catch the light a little bit more too. So I'm just moving between the top end of 2% and the lower end of 2% just to bring in some of these shapes. And again, as you were saying before, you can go in there with the eraser and create some of those little tears and gaps in that webbing structure. We need to start building up this white color. Put the brush up a little bit more, like 4%, just start building it in, ramping up the white. And then we'll go to the eraser, check that we're on the soft brush, setting in the eraser, put it down to 2%, and I think probably about 40% opacity actually, I think will work best. Then we can start putting in some gaps. And basically you're creating the same effects that was up there, but we're using an eraser now to actually remove sections of the white 
but ultimately it ends up making something very similar to what we've got up there. But obviously it's thinner, it's more stretched out, condensed into this area. Again, back to the brush, reduce it back down to the 2% again and start building in some of this white. Before we get too carried away with that, I am going to create another layer and I'm going to use the same colour. So we're still on this white colour. We're going to use other colours too, but we'll start with that white colour. 2% size, 15% opacity and just towards the bottom edge of what we've just been creating, we're going to create this water churn, this froth, turbulence in the water where it's creating a similar texture to what we had up here. So just keep that kind of round shape, almost like you're doing dots, but it has a roundness to it. So though you, you're putting dots onto the actual surface, it, it, it's creating a circular motion at the same time. So you're doing it almost as dashes that appear as circular movements. And you can allow that to just sort of fade up into the colour we've got up here. And then it will start to stretch out a little bit higher up. So keep it lumpy, keep those bumps, and just keep moving it all the way across. We'll just take a few minutes to do this part of it. And again, the beauty of digital, it's on a separate layer. So if you decide it's either too high or too low, you can move it around a little bit. And then the section immediately underneath it, if we just go over it a little bit, we want to get rid of that dark color that's immediately above it. So we can just use that now to help blend in what we've just done with the immediate section above. I'm going to go back to my layers, create another layer, but I'm going to put it underneath that layer. I'm going to go back to my colors and I'm going to use this color, which is the second color in. And I'm just going to put my brush up to be quite a big size, about 8%. We'll keep it on the, in fact, no, we'll move that up as well. We'll put that to about 50%. And we're just bringing this color underneath all of that. It's not the only color we're going to add, but we'll just have it as a starting point just to get rid of that blue. Back to our colours and we'll stay in the same layer, go to this third colour in and we'll just build in perhaps with a lower opacity, about 30%, still on the 8% size on the soft brush and we'll just build in some lighter colour here in the centre. It doesn't have to be terribly smooth, we're just building it in a little bit more in the centre region than anywhere else. Like that. We're then going to go for our darkest colour, first colour. We're going to reduce the size of that airbrush, that soft brush to the 2%. We'll keep it on the 30% and we're just going to move along this bottom edge. And again, in a slightly haphazard kind of way, we're going to have some bits, especially where it almost like raises up and you've got quite a lot of turbulence, get a thicker band of shadow. Then maybe just the thin amount that hugs it partly along the way. And then you might have another bigger shadow and you just keep that moving along. Slight gaps here and there. Some places it's going to appear darker than the others. Back to my colours. I'm going to use a slight blue colour at the top actually. I've got this third colour in from the right. And I'm just going to introduce a hint of that coming in as well. I don't want too much of it, but I just want to almost bring it in. It's underneath the white froth but it's just adding a little bit more of a splash of colour underneath that and it's going to be barely noticeable and we're going to go over it now but it just brings out a bit of variation of colour which I think can kind of help and if you've done too much you can always just go back to those darker colours again and just reduce it down so you want to really make sure that you preserve those darker shadows just feeding a little bit of texture from the right there or from the left and then a little bit from the right and some kind of streaks maybe just hints of texture here and there Okay, create another layer, back to 
the gray color at the top here, so third in from the, the right, and then we're just gonna reduce it down to 2% size, and again to about 15% opacity. And we're just gonna do similar to what we did there, but it's gonna be a much thinner layer underneath. So it's gonna twist and turn, you're gonna see it. And it's gonna be, first of all, maybe just set the line like so, and then maybe it can overlap partially in some areas and sort of merge together here as well. And then you can go back into it. And just like we did then, we're gonna keep it more condensed. So perhaps we should turn the brush size down a little bit to really the lower end of 2%, but we just put that same kind of movement and circular motion into this section too. Again, we can alternate between that and these other colors. So we've got the slightly warmer white. And we're just gonna bring out highlights in some places. But keep it a little bit sporadic. And just create some more, slightly more uneven gestures. So a real kind of almost like a mini ripple there within that ripple as well. Articulate it a little bit better. And then we can do the same with the white just in places if we feel we need to. Go back to the layer that was underneath, layer 15, which was that darker set of colors. We'll also go back to that darkest color here. We'll reduce the size of the brush or put it, leave it low down about the 2% size and we'll leave it at the 15% opacity. And we're just going to undercut that new wave with a bit of a shadow as well. So we just want to give it a bit more substance, a bit more depth, so we can see the effect because it casts its own shadow. Especially here, perhaps where we have a little bit of a, a recess, we can really see the shadow in that area. That makes sense. Stay on that same layer. And we're gonna to go to these colors at the bottom. We're gonna to go to this brown color put it at about 3% size and keep it at the 15% opacity. And we can just start to introduce down here some warmer, earthier tones. So obviously we've got the sand, the beach, bringing again a different quality of color here for this section. Separates the water and the actual sand a little bit, but we don't want to overdo it. So we're just bringing in a hint of that warmth. And then with that eraser set to the 2% size and 40% opacity, we can, and really low on the opacity at about 3%, we can just introduce the idea that we've got a bit more of that background blue shining through as well. We don't really want to do too much of that though, just hints. We may go back to that, but I need to add some more texture to this top area. So we'll go back up to where we just added that, which was layer 16. So go back to our colors and we're going to choose this gray color that we were using before, we're gonna have it really low on the opacity this time at about 5% and 2% size. And we're just gonna similar effect to what we had over here, but it's all going to lead from this edge. So it's going to wind back a little bit, but then it's gonna fizzle out for the most part anyway. And this is gonna give us the sense that it's coming from that direction. So it kind of fans out. So you're gonna see it going at this angle on this side, then it's gonna come straight towards us and then it's gonna come at more of that angle on that side. And that's really gonna help the idea that it is coming towards us. Now it's not necessarily a load of straight lines, but it is generally, we need to consider it coming from that direction. And it, as long as you're thinking about it coming from that direction, you'll end up putting gestures that will kind of create that effect. I feel like I need to put that up actually. So we'll put it up to about the 15% again. And again, we can just start to build in more of these textures. So as well as the lines that kind of join up like that, you'll just get the occasional breakaway dash and blob as well. So vary it up a little bit. So you might get some almost like wiggles coming from this, almost like as a block, but then you might get some breakaway points as well. So vary it up as much as you can. But generally as it goes off towards, or a bit further away, it's gonna get smaller 
So think about perspective, it, it will help. So slightly bigger shapes here, just at the edge, and then it narrows off as it goes a little bit further away. You can break it up with the eraser. Leave some areas perhaps where there isn't just as much. Allow perhaps your hands have a little bit of a wobble and a shake. It might just start to create some more textures that you are happier with. It looks a little less contrived, a little less artificial. And remember over to this side, the textures are really almost going sideways. So they're coming straight at us from here, but there's a general direction at the sides where it's almost going left to right, more so than it is in the center anyway. Maybe reduce the size of your brush to a point. Again, as I always explain, I'm just getting you to the general effect. You can zoom in as much as you like and spend hours on this if you want. I just want to quickly get you to the point where you can see you can really build up an effect, but I will add a few extra tiny little gestures in there as well. It doesn't take necessarily very long to add a few, but you can spend as long as you want. This is quite a lot more detail and a longer tutorial probably than most of my others. Again, I'm just adding a bit more of that edge where I feel like it's not solid enough. Build up that white turbulence. Maybe you've done too much in some areas, perhaps. In which case, you can just dial it back where you feel it's necessary. I quite like it just beyond that leading edge. It seems to make more sense. It's easy to add too much, so go back in, narrow it up if necessary. I'm just going to go to the warmer yellow, uh, warmer white rather. Reduce it down to that 1% and just build in a slight sharpness. It is one of the more foreground details, so it would make sense to have it a little bit more precise. And we have a layer where we can always duplicate it if we want to intensify it. It makes quite a big difference to do that. And if you feel like the two layers all at once is too much, then you can go to one of those layers by clicking on the end and you can just add whatever extent of it that you feel. So I'm not going to add it a little bit, but I'm going to get add it to about 40%. And I'll show you with or without. So you can see without and you can see with, and it really just brings it out and ramps it up a little bit. And I'm quite happy with the effect that that brings. I'm going to also go back to the layer that had that leading froth here, that edge, and I might just go and duplicate that layer, see what that does. Again, two layers of it is too bright, but I can take one of those layers and turn the opacity down. So I'm going to put it at about Again, 40%. So we've got the original strength of the first layer and then a duplicate at 40% and the combination has really helped build that up. I go to the top layer version of it. I'm gonna to go to my purest white and with a soft brush set to the lower end of 2% and a bit higher, so about 30% opacity. I'm just going to put in some extra white at the top in places just to really build it up. And in addition to that, I'm also going to go to the second color on that row with a reduced opacity at about 15%. Start to build in some almost like little blocks of shadow here. So we're adding more weight, more break in the texture of that white, especially along that bottom edge. In fact, I'm going to make it a bit stronger. So I'm going to put it up to 30% and just break up some of that white. It's almost looking a bit too solid. So certainly towards the bottom edge of it, but also a little bit higher in places. I'm just breaking up that bottom edge of that white, giving it a little bit more substance and more shadow. It casts a shadow, but it also has a shadow on the underside of it too. Just gives it a bit more believable weight and volume. Back onto layer 13, where you can see we've got most of that detail. I'm just gonna go back in with my eraser and just start to remove a little bit more of some of that color just to create more of those breaks. So again, I've got the eraser to 2% size and I'll put it up again to maybe not the full 60% we had it before, but 30% works quite well. I'm bringing in some subtler breaks in now. So again, a bit more of that disruption. You can maybe have some really prominent breaks in there as well as more subtle ones, however you feel is best.
I'm just going to go back to layer 11 where we had most of the texture. If I just move it and show you of this area, and I'm going to start building in some more of that. And I'm also going to use it to just add a bit more definition into these places. But we're just fine tuning at this point. So I'm going to go for the warmer white, which is the middle of these whites. And I'm just going to build up and exaggerate some of these textures as they join into this middle area. Not all of them, but just in places. So I can use a combination of that warm white and also one of my blues. So I think I'll go for the lightest blue. And certainly as it goes underneath, it's going to find that it's going to take on a variation of colors. So the blue is quite a useful blue to bring into this as well. And we can also perhaps ramp it up on the underside of our wave a little bit in this area. Not too much, just bringing in hints of it here and there. And then back to the warm and white, and we'll just continue just sharpening up some of these details. So I'm just using this brighter white just to create some variation, pick out some bits that I think will help to create that effect. I'm going to go to the top layer, create another layer, go back to my brushes this time. I've hardly used anything other than the soft brush. So I'm gonna to go to my spray paint, the Flix brush. I'm gonna to go to my pure white color. With this layer, we're gonna put it to about 10% size and 100% opacity. Effects with the spray. Now you just want to be careful. You don't wanna to do too much. I mean, that's almost too much really. So I'm just gonna reduce that down a little bit to more like 8% and just bring it subtly in a bit more. And that's almost enough. I mean, I can go back to my airbrushing soft brush. And if I just want to be a bit more deliberate with a 1% size brush and a 100% size or opacity, I can just manually start to add individual points where I want to add a little bit more of it. I've got the general effect, but if I just want to start building up that effect now with a few more manual ones, then I can do that. And we can go to the layer and just maybe just soften it in a little bit. It's a little bit harsh. So I'm going to put it down to about the 70%. And yeah, perhaps it's just in there a little bit more subtly. So I'm going to go back to it, in fact, on that basis, put it back down to about 4% size and just a hint of it along here. Play around with the size, whatever works up and down. If you do use the airbrushing, maybe switch to the medium brush even so you get an even sharper example. So we're on the 100% and maybe at 2%, you can get some real big away, breakaway splashes then coming from that section. Okay, one last layer, and I'm just gonna go in there with my brightest white at the 1% size. I'm gonna to have to reduce it a little bit to about 50%, and I'm just gonna go in there and just maybe bring out a couple of little details, like the, the subtle water in the background there. It's easy to overdo it, so press lightly, perhaps. Now, you may feel that you don't want to do it and you quite like the subtlety, but I really like to just slightly exaggerate the features when I create something. So I'm just going in there and just fine tuning a little bit just to bring out some of these features and make them just a little bit more dramatic as required. Okay, I may play around with the textures a little bit, but we're fundamentally there. So I hope you've enjoyed following along with this tutorial. Do make sure if you've had a go at this to share your results with me either on the Facebook group or within the Facebook group or tag me on Instagram. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done already and I shall see you back here soon. See you later.